Welcome back to The Hive Doctor, your beekeeping mentor. It's my job to take the guesswork out of beekeeping. Today we're going to be going over how to set up for the honey flow, also known as a nectar flow. Right now in my area, we're right on the front edge of a honey flow. And in order to understand how to set your hives up for honey flow, you first need to understand how to maintain your brood chamber. I'm going to explain both of those things today, so stick around. So when it comes to setting up your brood chamber, pretty much what a brood chamber is, is it's the area of the colony, the area of your beekeeping equipment that the queen has free reign of. The area that she goes around and lays eggs and the nurse bees raise the brood from. So it's where you're developing eggs, larvae, and pupa are, it's where eventually they emerge as fully developed adults to contribute to the colony and bring in resources. So there's basically three types of ways to set up your brood chamber. Depending on where you are and your personal preferences in conjunction with your climate location, you'll want to set up your brood chamber and try to be consistent with it in all of your beehives. Now I've tried all three methods and what those are are maintaining a brood chamber in a single deep hive body, a double deep hive body, or a one and a half. So what that is, is a single deep hive body is exactly what, what it sounds like. Only has access to walk around and lay eggs in a single deep hive body. A double deep is where she has access to two deep hive bodies. But I have decided to go the route of keeping my brood chambers and maintaining my bees in what's called one and a halves. And that's just one single deep hive body plus one super or medium hive or a medium honey super, a six and five eighths box. And the reason for this is because years ago when I used to maintain my bees in single deeps, I would put a queen excluder on top of that, right at the honey flow, and then all the honey supers on top. And I would come along and harvest all the honey supers where the queen did not have access to. She couldn't lay eggs and therefore have brood in the honey. You don't want to pull honey that has brood in it. It's borders along the lines of being unethical because it kills the brood and you don't want to get brood guts in your honey. Unfortunately, that is a practice among a lot of commercial beekeepers who fail to use queen excluders. So I highly recommend that you use queen excluders for that reason. I have not used excluders during flow and I have used them and it is a mess to sort out when you don't use them. It's just worth putting on a queen excluder and managing your hives in a way that you understand and can feel confident that you know what's going on. Now the mistake that I made was when I did only run single deeps, I would come and harvest everything above it. I thought that the bees were storing honey down here in the brood nest, but the bees are incredibly efficient and they realized that this was the only area that the queen had to lay. So they made the most of it and filled all 10 frames with brood, putting all of their honey up top. So I was wrong in assuming that the bees were storing honey down below and thinking that they still had enough honey. And so when I came along and harvested that honey, I was leaving my hives without enough food. That was not a very sustainable practice and I've changed it. So now I run one and a halfs because that gives them the chance to put honey up here, plenty of honey for themselves, and still have plenty of room to lay brood down in a single deep hive body. So now I've got a one and a half and right here I have a queen excluder and I've got one honey super on top. That's gonna to be for me. Everything below is gonna be for the bees. Now I've only got so many medium honey supers. I don't have enough built yet for all of my hives. So I'm at a point where I'm having to use deep hive bodies as honey supers and that's totally fine. Use whatever equipment you have, but whenever the honey flow comes on, you wanna make sure that you give the bees plenty of room to put honey. It's better to have more room than not enough. If you don't have enough, you're gonna miss out on having been able to make more honey. The bees could possibly become honey bound, which is when the bees pack so much honey in the hive, they've completely run out of room and they've even run out of room for the queen to lay. So they become cramped and crowded and that's when they swarm. So when you give them plenty of room, it's easier because you give them so much room to put that honey, even if they don't fill it all up, it's okay. You've not only prevented swarming, You've helped them 
store enough honey for themselves and you've helped yourself make as much honey as you can under those ideal circumstances of weather and bloom and time of the year in your area. So in a second here, I'm gonna open up that hive on the far end there and show you how I'm going to super it today. So I've got the camera here at the back side of my beehives. It's always better to work from the back so that you're not in their flight path because for one thing you could get stung and another it disrupts the bees flow. They've got a certain pattern going down. They're coming and going like crazy, especially during a honey flow. So I'm working from the back and side of my hives, staying out of their way so that we can both continue to work mutually without any issues. I'm gonna smoke their entrance. And this particular hive is a swarm I caught and just relocated to this area. Put a little bit of smoke underneath the hive cover, let them know I'm coming. I'm not going to drop that hive cover because as soon as I pop it, bees are going to start filling in that gap. And if I drop the lid, I'm going to squash the bees. Okay, so they've not started moving up into this deep hive body yet. And that's okay. Again, it was a swarm and they're still working on filling out this bottom box here. But I'm going to be gone during part of the honey flow, I won't be able to come back and work. So I'm gonna go ahead and give them another box now so that I don't have to worry about, do my bees have enough room later, halfway through the honey flow? And again, remember I ran out of medium honey supers, but I've got plenty of deep hive bodies right now not being used. So I'm gonna put this on, even out the frames, space them nice and even from one another. And even though the bees are only in the bottom, a swarm especially can surprise the heck out of you with how fast they can fill up a hive with bees and honey. So now I've got this one supered. I don't have to worry about whether they're gonna run out of room or not, and I'm ready to move on to the next. And remember, it's better to give your bees more room than they're going to use rather than not enough. All right, this hive's done. One thing I wanna point out here is this honey super is mostly bare frames so this is a new box it's a new new set of 10 frames it's never been drawn out with bees wax with honeycomb before so during a honey flow is when the bees are going to do their magic and really draw this out very quickly because they have the incoming resources to do so now it's going to take them a little bit longer to work on this by drawing out that comb and then filling with honey i'm still going to put another deep hive body box with fully drawn out comb on top because I've got at least four, possibly five weeks of honey flow and the bees are gonna surprise me with how quickly they can fill this up and even anything else that I put on them. One thing I wanna make sure that you do during a honey flow, when you are putting on bare frames for the bees to draw out and there's no beeswax or honeycomb on them yet, you wanna make sure that these 10 frames are pushed in tight to one another. Make sure there's no gaps, no spaces in between. I'm gonna bring you closer to show you what I mean. All right, so right now, I've got all my frames tight together. If I have something like this, where there's this gap here, the bees are not gonna build the comb evenly. They're gonna build something called cross comb. And that's where they build comb, not nice and even along the sides, but rather they build it this way and connect two frames together, and thus making it difficult to pull out frames individually. You don't want that. So the first time that you have frames being drawn out, you wanna make sure they're tight, so the bees draw them nice and even. After that, and you, they have gone through a harvest and put back on bees, and the bees have cleaned them up, and you've got a nice even comb, you can space them out a little bit more and not worry that the bees are going to build cross comb, because now they've already got it established, they have a nice pattern, and they'll stick to it. So with these frames tight, I'm gonna go ahead and put on my deep high body box as a honey super on top. And this one's done. I've got one last hive here to work on this end of the, of the yard. It was another swarm I relocated to this area. They're currently in a one and a half and the queen has access to that one and a half. I've got to take the hive cover off install a queen excluder, and then I'm gonna put a deep hive body box on top of them. Now this particular honey super had already been through a honey flow last year, and all these frames have drawn out comb. So this swarm had a head start with comb. They didn't have to draw it out. So I'm gonna take out one of these middle frames and give you an idea of what they're already doing. And wouldn't you know it, on the first frame that I pulled, I've got my queen. 
She's dark right there. So she's walking around in this medium honey super. Let's see if she's laying any eggs. Oh, she sure is. This side is mostly laid full of eggs and over here as well. So she's doing really well. And you can see, as, and as you can see, they've got a darker color crowning the top. That's the current incoming nectar that they're bringing in, primarily from tulip poplar trees and blackberry right now. Underneath that crown of honey is where the queen is laying eggs right now. When you put it on the queen excluder, you always wanna make sure that your queen is under it. So I'm gonna put this back very carefully because I know my queen's on this frame. And it's always important to treat her as though she is super fragile because she is. Here's my excluder. I use metal bound excluders and plastic. My favorite are the metal. And now my deep hive body box as the honey super. And we're done with this hive. Now this yard is supered and ready for the honey flow. And I don't have to worry about them for at least two to three weeks to come through, do a double check and see if they need another box or if they're gonna be good for the rest of the flow. So that's it for today. If you have any questions about how I set up my brood chambers or about setting up for a honey flow or queen excluders, drop me a comment below. Drop me one of these, tell your friends about the Hive Doctor, and I'll see you in the next video.